talk about your start, six-game win streak. Uh, how do you feel your team is uh, right now? Oh, we're off to a good start. Uh, I wish we wouldn't have thrown a ball away last week, or we'd be a really great start. But uh, it's a good, it's a, it's a, a challenge for us to put this group together. Like Susie mentioned, we have a lot of new pieces out there as well. So just trying to get them all playing at a high level at the same time. We're starting to create a little competition amongst the team as far as the pitchers and position players go. So we still have a few guys that really hadn't gotten a mix yet, but I think uh, that'll certainly happen these next five games. Man, I think we're a little different than we've been. I told the guys I didn't think we were going to hit 100 home runs, but every time we hit one, they count them down. So I think we're getting closer. Uh, you know, the guys have done a good job. Uh, Willie Stewart's done a good job with the guys. Matt Williams, and, of course, Tanner's been outstanding with the staff. So I think, you know, we've added some good pieces. But, uh, you know, the guys have gotten better. I mean, Bradley Fry's turned into a prospect. Uh, Carter Sanford's scuffling a little bit, but he's a good player. Looks like we hit a home run with uh, Parker Lester off the portal and, you know, Noah Best and Brandon Prince, and those guys are all new to the program. And, you know, some of the returning guys that weren't in the mix last year that have really gotten off to a good start with, you know, Connor Todaro has been outstanding. He's been great from day one. Uh, shoot, uh, Ben Olson's been really a key behind the plate. So, uh, you know, we've got some guys that have gotten a lot better, but we have 20 something seniors. So hopefully we've seen a lot and we're ready to go through the fire a little with this group. Given the new guys, you know, Garrett comes to mind after a couple of good Sunday starts here, you know, good opportunity for him to build a little confidence in the in non-conference, would you say? It is, you know, I'm a little upset he's not throwing the ball harder. I thought he was going to throw the ball 94, 95, but somebody told me he doesn't have to yet. So I think he'll have to this weekend. But, uh, man, he's really talented. He's probably one of the best guys I've ever coached here. Uh, but he's, uh, he's certainly older than his, uh, than his freshman year. His mound presence is outstanding. He's very mature on the mound. And, you know, you can see he pitches with a plan out there. The guy really has an idea of how he's trying to attack the hitters and what to do with the ball. So, uh, you know, we've started him on the Sunday spot. A lot of people have asked me, is he going to stay on the Sunday spot? You know, we don't know. But our Friday guy, Colton Coster, has been pretty good too. So, you know, that's a good problem to have. But obviously, man, the games are tough. They're close. I think we're going to be in a bunch of close games. And I always tell our guys and I tell all the coaches that I've coached with, you know, it's not the best team that wins. It's the team that plays the best. So hopefully we can continue and play a little bit better. And I know in years past you talked about just the importance of being good in this week, especially coming off you know, a good weekend series. Uh, you got to you know, have you have a one day between the games here with the fans coming down. Yeah. How do you manage that? Well, you know, we had a good midweek last week against Kennesaw. We have a good night up there, and they go beat Clemson 18-1. to 1. I mean, top 10 team in the country. So I think for us to grow and to get the postseason and have success on the big stage, We've got to beat Florida a and We have to beat Georgia Tech, Florida State, you know, Georgia. Those are the teams you're going to play in postseason. So, you know, we'll start Graham Ington tomorrow. He'll be really good for us. Jess Ackerman will start on Wednesday. So, uh, but, man, it's just I try to not play the game, the name game. I just want to play the game because uh, I just think we're, you know, I don't know where we are with this team. I think we may have a chance to be pretty good. We may not be any good. But uh, I can tell you, we have pushed those guys out there now. I've re- I rode them hard till the, from the minute we started. To, <laughs> so I'm on those cats. And, uh, but it, it's been fun. I think we can get it out of them. I do love the group. Man, they, they bring it every day. They, they play hard every day. So it's, uh, if you're interested in how to play hard, come watch Tony Brown. That guy will run through the wall for you. When I tell Tony run through the wall, he'll run through it. He'll get up and run through it again now. Brandon Prince will too. But that's the kind of guys we have, and it's just a credit to the development that we've been able to do with those guys. So it's been fun. We're off to a good start, but it's, uh, it's been fun to be a part of those guys every day with them. Last thing for me, going back to last week, have you ever had a player hit a Waffle House? Um, man, that was interesting. When that ball went out of the park, I saw that Waffle House. I told the guys in the dugout, I said, man, I think he's getting ready to hit one at that Waffle House. And uh, it went out. We need him to hit a few more. He's a very talented guy, but he's sort of pressing a little bit. But, uh, you know, this game will humble you in a hurry. So, uh, but uh, Ty is very special, good, good player, man. He's one of the best kids I've ever coached here. And uh, we changed positions with him to sort of help him down the road in professional baseball. So I put him in the outfield. So, uh, but he's, he's very talented. He just, he, he's his worst critic, you know. So he's very hard on himself. And, but that's what great players do. So, uh, 
but no, he, he had a good night up there. We needed him to have a good night tomorrow night. Uh, I understand what, uh, what a coach will say to this question, but do you, have, do you look at that uh, a team you just come off beating pretty well on the road and then they go up there and be a top 10 team? Do you put much stock in that as a coach? I mean, you just don't know. For RBI, RPI purposes, we do. So we, it certainly helps RPI. I'm going to USA Today poll, and I voted this morning. I didn't vote us in, obviously. But uh, I kept Clemson in. And, of course, Northeastern is in. And uh, But it's just, uh, you know, baseball you play so often. It's not like basketball and football where you play a couple of times a week. So you, you sort of have to have a short memory. You know, if you weren't great yesterday, you got to have the ability to put it behind you. And, you know, I coach Joe Winker here. His dad, you know, of course, his dad of Jesse Winker, a big leaguer. Mr. Winker used to always tell me it's like riding a wave. You want to start that wave out as far as you can from the shore because at some point it's going to come to an end. So hopefully our wave is just starting and we're just starting to get on a roll. But it's, uh, I mean, baseball is just, it's, I've seen some crazy stuff happen in baseball. But it's just, it's, <laughs> it's a crazy game sometimes. Well, I recruited Parker, and I don't say I very much, but I recruited him about three years ago, and I didn't get him. So I was disappointed I didn't get him round one, but I got him round two, and, uh, you know, I call it selecting. I really don't call it recruiting. We, I think we've done a good job selecting good people and making them better. Uh, but, uh, you know, I wanted to make him a third baseman when I recruited him out of high school, but he goes to Miami of Ohio, and they put him at first, and he's been really good at first, but... Uh, I wanted to put him over there and maximize his potential draft-wise. And, and, of course, he comes from a great baseball family. His uncle's the national scouting director for the Pirates. His cousin made his big league debut this year with the Orioles. So he's a baseball guy. And, uh, but I will say he's a perfectionist, and he likes to be good, and he's a worker. So he really works hard at his craft to be great. And I say personality-wise, he's fit in perfectly. But we had a relationship with him prior to getting him, just like we did with Brandon Prince. And we recruited Bradley Fry before he committed to Tech. And Graham Eintema, our pitching coach, knew him before he went to Mississippi State. So we've had some relationships with those guys. Sure. Uh, last thing for me, um, again, the winning helps, but also the, the atmosphere at the stadium. Oh, man. The really out, so how that it's really good, man. We have done – you know, the kids we've had that have sort of been other places and they come back here, they're just blown away with the environment. On our level, and, you know, I'll be honest, on some Power 5 levels, they don't have the environment we have. But that's a credit to our department and our administration for what they do for the sport. So they've done a great job from our sports information department to our administrators to the athletic department. Man, those guys, the marketing team, what they've done is, is phenomenal. Our environment is special. I mean, Dean from Monmouth wants to come back already. So it's a good environment. It, it's, it's a special environment. Friday nights are, are a lot of fun out there, especially when you win a few. Yeah. Coach, you hit on your pitches out a little bit. Talk about you haven't had to use them a whole lot yet because your starters have come out there. But where are you on the, the back end? I know you got Brian Olson, which is reliable, but where are you on the back end of the bullpen? Where are you with the back end, your back end boys? Well, we, start, we finally have the depth to sort of develop it and sort of model it after professional baseball so we can develop some roles you know, if we can get five, six innings out of that front line, that starter, get us up to close to 100 pitches, and then we can bridge the gap to the, get to the end. You know, Olsen's a guy that's never really closed. He started, but he's, you know, he's 95, 96 miles an hour from the left side, and, you know, I only have him this year, so it's, uh, I'm going to use him for sure. We are trying to figure out how to maximize that guy because last week I think he threw, he's only thrown one time in a week, and i got to figure out how to use him better. Uh, but, you know, the, we've got to – stable of those guys you know Lawson Cole's been great at the end Mike Atakis has been really good Reed Fagerstrom so Tanner Gordon's done a good job with developing that staff so I think the key is we've been able to get them out when they've had success too we don't have to run them back out for inning two yesterday Lawson throws four or five pitches and he gets out of the inning we're able to bring another arm in and we, we have Lawson for tomorrow night so we've been able to develop that staff and it's uh it's been fun so far but we're getting ready to get into the heat so we'll see what it looks like tomorrow